Hey y'all, in this video, we're going to get into some more composite 3D modeling, and I'm going to demonstrate four of the five combined modes that are available. I'm using Aspire version 10.21, but this works exactly the same way in vCarve Desktop and vCarve Pro. To get started, we'll need to get a model out here in the middle. I'm just going to start with something simple. We'll select this apple right here just because it's quick and easy and real handy. So I'll double click that to get one set in the center of my material. Then I'll come over here to the modeling tab. So we can see what's going on in the 2D view and the 3D view at the same time, I'm going to go ahead up here and tile my windows vertically. So I have my 2D view and my 3D view simultaneously. Now it's already in move and transform mode. And if we take a look at what we have here in the 2D view, we have this light color here in the center, gradually going darker and the darkest areas being over here. This is a grayscale representation of the model. The lighter colors are the shallower areas that the bit is going to machine. The darker colors are where the bit is going to machine deeper. And that's reflected out here as well when we take a look at the model. This is the deepest part of the carving and this is the shallowest part of the carving. I mention that for a couple of reasons. We'll get into those in just a couple of minutes. There are three different ways of selecting the model. I'll go ahead and click off, and we'll see that my grayscale drawing here has kind of gone real light. That's to let me know that it is not selected. And out here in my 3D view, it just looks like the material, Canadian maple in this case, that I set up in my job setup. Also, notice that the name over here is not highlighted in blue. To select a 3D model, we'll either click on it once out here in the 2D view, just to select it. I'll click off. Out here in the 3D view, if I click on it like I'm doing right now, it doesn't do anything. To select from the 3D view, I have to double click it. You'll see that the model turns red. My color is back in my grayscale, and the title is selected and highlighted in blue over here in my component tree. I'll click off again to deselect. The third way of selecting the model is just to click on the name in the component tree here. Well, with the model selected, let's take a look over here and we see this little icon right next to the title. That is the icon for this model's combine mode. Now, there are two ways of accessing the combine mode to change it should you need to. One is to select the model, then right click, and the first option in this context menu that opens up is Combine Mode. And when I put my cursor over Combine Mode, it opens up a submenu over here. And I can select Add, Subtract, Merge, Low, or Multiply. The other way to get in and change the Combine Mode is to again select the model, and then come up here under Modeling Tools to this wrench. That displays the properties of this component. So I'll click on that icon, and right here underneath the name, we have a graphic illustration of the five combined modes that are available to us for this particular component. Now, in this video, I am not going to talk about the multiply combine mode at all. That subject warrants its own video 
There are a lot of variables and only a few situations where you would use multiply, but we'll save that for another video. We're going to focus on these four over here, and they are add, subtract, merge, and low. With a single model out here in the project, we can use any of these four, but more than likely what you're going to end up using will either be add, and I'll go ahead and click on that, which simply adds the model to the top of the modeling plane out here. We could also use subtract. Now you'll notice when I click on subtract, two things happen. One, out here the grayscale image of our model inverted. What used to be the lighter color is now the darker color, and what used to be the darker color gray is now the lighter color. This is showing us that this is going to be the deepest part of the carve, and this is going to be the shallowest part of the carve. What we have effectively done is carved this model into the material. I'll go ahead, close this for a second, and add a zero plane to the top of the model to give you a better representation of what that looks like. This would be appropriate if you were carving a mold, if you wanted to cast something out of silicone or plaster or something like that. It's not very common to use the subtractive mode, but it is there for us to use should we, des should we want to. Now that's the subtract mode. Now I'm going to go ahead and get rid of the zero plane. So I'll just select it, right click, and delete it. We'll select our apple again, go back into the properties. I'm going to put it back in the add combine mode. So we're back to carving away the material out here and leaving the apple behind. In this instance, where you have a single model using merge, doesn't really do a lot. The thing to remember is Aspire and VCarve both out here in the component tree model from the bottom up. So if I were to add another model, it would be inserted into the component tree above the apple and I could change its position, but it would start compiling the model from the bottom up. With this model set to merge, it's not really accomplishing much of anything because other than the modeling plane, there's nothing for it to merge with. That will come in later if we start adding other elements. So let's come back over here for just a second and basically remember that the add combine mode simply adds our component, our model, onto whatever is below it, be it the modeling plane here or another component or model. The subtract combine mode will carve this component into whatever is down below it. Let's go ahead and reset here. I will close the properties. I'll get rid of this model here. Let's go back down into the clip art and see how components can interact with one another when we have more than one. I'll go ahead into my domes and dishes and I'm going to go ahead and select a flat square. I just want a plaque with a square shape with rounded off edges. Let's go ahead and double click that to put one in the center of my material. And I'll hold down shift and click this box out here and enlarge it so we can see it a little bit better. So we have our plaque shape out here. We'll kind of rock this back. Maybe we'll just go into an isometric view so we can see what that looks like. 
let's find something else to put here on our square plaque. Let's just go back for the apple. I'll double click it to put one in the center. Now we kind of see we have a problem out here. So let's go over into the modeling tab. And if we look over here, we see that our combine mode is set to merge. What merge does is it brings the base of our Apple model, in this case, down to the top of the modeling plane, level with the bottom of our plaque here. Well, we don't want it to do that. We don't want it to merge with our plaque. We want to add it to the top. So I'll come up here into properties and I'm going to change the combine mode to add. And that brought our apple up to the top of our plaque. So it added this apple to the top of the plaque. Now let's kind of experiment a little bit here and take a look at what that would look like in the subtractive mode. So I'll click on subtractive. My drawing changes out here. And if I look now, I have carved that apple into the top of my square plaque. So you begin to see the difference in these two combined modes, as well as merge. Merge, again, puts the base of my apple, the bottom surface, down onto the top of the modeling plane, level with the bottom surface of my flat square. Again, if I wanted to carve that apple, I would change it to add. And as we see, Aspire modeling from the bottom up takes the flat square and adds the apple on top of it. Let's go back to a straight Z view. And let's go ahead and clean this up, delete these. I'll close the properties because we have nothing there to look at. And we'll get into some times when you would want to merge models. Let's go ahead into my decorative category and look for a couple of flourishes here. See if we can find something appropriate to play around with. Here's one right here. Flourish Repeat 2. I'm going to double click one to set it into the center of my material. I'll go back over to the modeling tab. Now I want to reduce this in size a little bit because it's a little bit big for my taste. So I'm just going to bring it down. That looks okay right there. Now I want to rotate this. So I'm going to go ahead and put it into move and transform mode. I'm just tapping the number zero on my keyboard. And every time I do that, it turns 45 degrees clockwise. So there's twice right there. Now I want to kind of zoom in. And I want to grab this corner right here and slide it over. I want to drag that corner over onto my X zero line. There we go. Nudge it over with my cursor arrow. So that's this corner right there. Now I want to mirror this model, make another copy over here. So I'll come up here to mirror selected object. I want to flip about the job center. I want to create a mirrored copy. And I'll flip these horizontal. And then I'll close that. Now, if we look over here in our 3D view, that actually looks okay. But I don't want this gap in between them. I want them closer together. And in fact, I want them to overlap so that this edge here is lined up with this edge right here on this part of the model. 
I'll put this into move and transform mode. Come in a little closer and I'm going to bring this over. Release. And I'll just kind of by eye bump it up one more time. And let's move it to the right. Zoom in closer. Just slightly one more. Yeah, that looks about okay. I'll back out, deselect. Now I'm interested over here in my 3D view. With this combine mode set to merge, these two models have blended, merged with one another. I do have this little bit of a gap. I could smooth that out if I wanted to. But they blend together down here. They flow into one another. That's the kind of look I'm going for there. So let me come back over into my 2D view. Select one half. Hold down shift. Select the other half. And I want to align them to the center of my material. Close that. I'll move them into move and transform mode. And bring them up straight up to where the bottom is sitting on my y-axis zero line here. Now, I want to mirror them downwards. So, I'll go back into Mirror Selected Objects, flip about Job Center, create a mirrored copy, flip vertical, close, click off to deselect, and looking out here, little bit of a distortion right here. So I'll select both of these. And just using my cursor keys, I'll come in here and bump these up just slightly. And taking a look out here. There we go. That's blended those in nicely. All four of my flourishes have the combined mode set to merge. So we see that by getting into our 3D components and adjusting the combine mode, we can make for some very interesting patterns. It's learning when to merge, when to add, when to subtract, how to pay attention to modeling heights, and getting in and having a little bit of fun and adjusting things little by little, one by one, and just playing. This is the time to play. This is the time to. Get in and learn as much as you can in the software and just apply different effects. For instance, I have this going on here where I have the top of this flourish is appearing as part of this flourish here. Well, how do I get rid of that? Well, I want this flourish to merge with this one. Now we see the green. The green is where this component overlaps this component. But we can see the green means this is down inside of this component. That has to do with modeling heights. We'll select this component. And we see here our shape height is 0.21. Let me go ahead and change that to 0.25. So it's a quarter of an inch tall. But now I need to adjust the base height of this flourish. I need to bring this flourish up above this model. So let's bring it up to one eighth of an inch and see if that's enough. Let it update. And it brought the base of this model up on top of this part 
But if we look, I still have some green right here and right there. So it needs to come up a little bit. Let's go up to 127. Let the model update. That wasn't enough. Let's go to 0.13. That still wasn't enough. Let's go to 1.5 and see if that is enough to do it. There we go. Now we no longer have any green in here. This flourish is sitting on top of this flourish, but it looks like the petals are sliding into this flourish. It's all becoming one piece. And that, that is a good look. So I have the combined mode of my base flourish set to add. I have this one set to merge. Let's add a little bit more out here. Let's go into some of my weaves. And let's take this Celtic knot pattern here. And I need to make this much, much smaller. Because I want to bring it up and put it up here. Let's scoot in here. And I think it needs to go up. And that appears to be about the center, maybe over to the left. And I'm just tapping the arrow keys on my keyboard. That looks about right. Looks good. Go back into the modeling tab. Click off and we see that it is not selected here. It is green here. We are in the merge combine mode. I'm going to change that to add. And it adds that Celtic knot on top of this flourish. Again, go in here into our clip art, find another little weave here, hold down shift and reduce the size, bring it down into the center, scoot in, and this needs to bump down a little bit and over to the left a little bit. Click off. Once again, it's in green over here in our 3D view. Go into the Modeling tab, right-click, Combine Mode, Add. Now it's added to this flourish here. Again, V-Carve and Aspire both model from the bottom up. So we've taken this flourish here, switch over to my 2D view, click off of everything. We've taken this flourish here, and we've added it to our modeling plane. We've added this flourish up here, this big one, and we merged it with this flourish, so that the tips of the flourish do not telegraph through the flourish. We added this weave up here into this area. Then we added this weave to this area. By breaking it down and understanding how you want two components to interact with one another, you can better design a composite model that will look good and that will actually be carvable. So I hope you got something out of this video. If you did, I would appreciate a thumbs up. Today at noon Pacific, 3 p.m. Eastern Time, I'll be hosting a live Q&A where we can discuss the combined modes composite modeling, or anything else 
I have discussed in this video. Again, that's today at noon Pacific, 3 p.m. Eastern Time, right here on my YouTube channel. And I'll put a link to that live Q&A down in the description box to this video. Now, these live Q&A sessions are a good reason to go ahead and subscribe to my channel. And when you click that red subscribe button down there, click that little bell right next to it. That's the notification bell. Then click it a second time and select all notifications. That way you'll be notified the next time I post a video and the next time I go live. So, I hope to see you this afternoon. But as always, whether you subscribe to my channel or not, I'd like to thank you very much for taking the time to watch, and you all take care.